Good afternoon. My name is Jure Rauning. I'm a professor of Power, Process and Environmental Engineering at the University of Maribor, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering. In the Laboratory for Transport Phenomena in Solids and Fluids, we work on mathematical modeling and numerical simulation of transport phenomena. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the International Conference of Pure and Applied Sciences to, for the invitation to present this keynote lecture. Uh, the presentation um, which I will show has been done um, in collaboration with many other colleagues as well as PhD students and postdocs. Most are coming from the University of Maribor, but several are from also from Udine in Italy, from Erlangen in Germany and from Split in Croatia. Let me first explain what we mean by transfer phenomena. We consider fluid flow, heat transfer and mass transfer, so the transport of momentum, energy and species. Um, we developed mathematical models for this, as well as uh, numerical methods. Uh, in the slide you see two examples of such flows. Um, in both cases, the fluid enters the domain from the left-hand side and flows towards the right. In this case, we have a sunken cavity in, in the domain with a hot plate at the bottom. And we, this color, we denote the temperature changes. And uh, this kind of um, simulations nicely show the beauty of fluids, where we have a large vortices as well as uh, small vortices. Um, and then engineeringly important results here could be the, the white uh, plot here, which uh, denotes the heat transfer um, uh, from, from the bottom plate as a function of uh, distance of the length of the plate. In the bottom uh, slide, we again have a fluid entering and we observe the development of boundary layer, um, the color here denotes vorticity, and the sudden expansion in, in this channel um, generates vortices, and uh, again we see a nicely dynamical picture. Um, so today I want to share with you a couple of uh, examples of our recent work, and I hope you will enjoy the lecture. In light of the recent pandemic of the COVID-19 disease, which has spread all over the world, we decided to use computational fluid dynamics to try to establish the development of the disease in younger people as compared to development in, in adults. It is well known um, and has been observed that the development of the disease is in, for young people, for children, milder. Um, we decided to investigate if there is a reason which is purely can be determined by fluid dynamics. So we started by uh, taking a geometry of the lung which has been obtained by uh, uh, CT scans of, uh, of a patient. Um, this uh, complete geometry uh, was uh, rather complex so we simplified it by taking into account only the main parts so the tracheobronchial lesion, region and at the top and then the first seven bifurcations of the lung tissue. Um, the, the capillary part um, at the end of the lung was, uh, was uh, not modeled, but rather um, a series of collectors were, were set at the bottom of the, of the um, lungs. Now, the, it is known that the disease is going, to be, uh, is going to affect the patient more strongly if a lot of uh, virus uh, reaches the inner part of the lung. So in our geometry, this means that the, um, uh, if we get a lot of uh, aerosol particles in, in, into the, the end of the lung geometry, into these collectors, <coughs> we will and discover such a connection. Um, in order to, de to do such a numerical study, we consider the Nebel-Stokes equations and in a Reynolds average sense. This means that the velocity fluctuations coming from turbulence have been averaged out and uh, replaced by a turbulence model. In this case, we use the k, k omega the SST turbulence model and as far as other um, assumptions, we consider incompressible flow of air um, in the lung. Now, <clears throat> the flow field uh, 
which is calculated is then used to perform particle tracking. The particles in which uh, aerosol is found are usually um, droplets, as uh, we consider them uh, simply to be water of different sizes. Now what happens is that uh, during uh, coughing one uh, produces a large uh, amount of particles of different sizes but the more dangerous ones um, are um, really micrometer size so aerosols which linger in the air uh, for a long, long period of time and can be inhaled by people um, coming into the same area as the patient. Um, <clears throat> These uh, uh, really small particles um, happen to be due to a simple breathing, sneezing or coughing, but also they can occur from larger particles uh, due to evaporation. Uh, These kind of um, particles are the biggest problem since uh, a large particle which has been, for example, sneezed out includes, uh, since it was large at the beginning, has a, a huge number of uh, viruses inside and when it evaporates it becomes small so that it doesn't settle and um, it might cause problems and uh, be an origin of the disease. So we, in the first assumption for particle tracking, we just consider point-wise spherical particles. So the reason for this assumption is uh, largely simple. So due to small size, um, and since the surface tension in water scales as uh, one over radius, uh, the, the surface tension is strong enough, enough so that the approximation of spherical particles is okay. Uh, uh, and on the other hand, uh, the uh, aerosols follow the fluid flow quite closely, so, <clears throat> so it is uh, enough um, to consider them as pointwise since the, since the Reynolds number um, of the flow over the particle is much less than one, and we can actually consider this to be a Stokes flow. And based on this, we develop our mathematical model. Um, we so consider the acceleration of the particle to be a function of drag caused by the flow, uh, relative velocity of the fluid uh, across the particle, as well as uh, buoyancy and uh, gravity. The model for the drag force is the at, at most in most cases the just simply the standard um, the standard uh, Stokes flow model since the particle Reynolds number, as I mentioned, for our types of particles will be quite small and it will probably never reach uh, values like a thousand and it will stay around Reynolds number equals to one or less. Um, now another assumption that we make is that the particle, so the aerosol, um, sticks to the lungs when uh, it arrives into the vicinity of the lung wall. This is due to the fact that there is mucus on, on the, in the lungs and it's quite a good assumption that when the particle comes into the vicinity, in the vicinity it will simply be absorbed into the wall. And so in our simulations we remove the particle away from the computation if it strikes the wall. Um, one final thing that needs to be considered, since we are using a Reynolds averaged um, Vestox equations, the solution of the velocity field and the pressure field do, do not include turbulent oscillations. Um, and on the other hand, these turbulent oscillations are generating additional forces on the particle. And um, the model to take this into account is uh, based on uh, stochastic dispersion and it is connected to the turbulence kinetic energy. Uh, via, via such an equation that the velocity fluctuation is proportional to, to k, which is turbulence kinetic um, energy. Um, now let us uh, look at a couple of uh, uh, compute results for the flow computation in the lung. First, we designed uh, several computational meshes in order to, to solve this problem. Um, 
we use the finite volume method uh, to, to solve the equations and the software that was used was open from. Um, so different sizes of meshes were, were constructed with different number of boundary layers to capture the to capture the um, um, boundary layer of the flow um, in lungs. Due to the quite complex geometry, the mesh meshing of this kind of geometry to produce a high quality mesh proved quite a challenge. Um, so when we now compare the results for different meshes, uh, so which, are, which is shown in this figure, and on the left hand side we have a reference of some other researchers who also did the same case. And we see quite a good similarity, um, especially in the in the meshes on the right, which, which present the most fine meshes. So we see that we uh, captured the, uh, the area where the velocity field is large quite well. Also, we captured the recirculation areas, for example, right here. So the blue color denotes uh, recirculation. Um, in terms of the turbulence kinetic energy, which is the bottom panel over there, um, the differences are a little bit larger. Um, however, the turbulence kinetic energy also we obtain at least approximately um, the right regions where the turbulence kinetic energy is large, for example, in this part. So this means that the stochastic dispersion model for, for particle dispersion will work quite well. On the left hand side, um, we have some profiles um, of the velocity field at, at uh, different cross sections. Um, and we see quite good agreement between different meshes um, and different methods. So uh, with this, we were satisfied with the flow field and we proceeded to uh, to simulate the particle tracking. Um, before that, a couple of words on the boundary conditions. So we used uh, a fixed pressure at the inlet, so at the mouth, um, and uh, known mass flux at the, outlet, at the outlet. These values were obtained using an experimental model of this same geometry, um, and it was done uh, by a, a check, our Czech colleagues. Um, for the for the velocity field at the lung walls, we just consider no slip, which is a standard boundary condition for such uh, cases. So, um, in order to do particle tracking, we first decided, of course, on the particle parameters, uh, the, the size of the particle, and so on, and then released 100,000 of them at the, uh, at the mouth, uh, at the mouth uh, area. So we follow them, and then after they um, hit the wall, we just leave them there so we can see the approximately how the distribution of particles looks like. And obviously, the first result which you notice is that the, a lot of particles are are located in the throat region, in just the upper airway, um, since they cannot, um, even though they have quite small inertia since they are uh, micrometer sized they still cannot make uh, make this turn of um, flow of air of air uh, around this bend uh, from the mouth towards the trachea. Um, the, 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 the circular region over here um, is just an, an extension to, to get the flow field at the mouth uh, uh, into um, proper shape. So and the particles are not tracked in there. Um, so we did several different um, studies like this, and the final results which we which we um, considered was to to measure the deposition fraction, so the percentage of particles that deposited in different parts of the lung, um, as a function of the particle uh, diameter. So we have uh, uh, particles between one mic micron and ten micron and we consider different age groups. So the age groups were, were established in the following way. The original lung geometry was in, for an adult male, and we scaled that uh, geometry for different ages of children based on the data we found in the literature for the, for the um, uh, shape uh, and size of the lungs uh, in children. Also, we varied the pediatric respiratory rate, so how many breaths per minute are um, 
um, used by children.